Clay Farmhouse. I'm Leanne and today I am baking for a bake sale. I've already done 40 whoopie pies and I've already taken them to where I'm selling them. I did traditional whoopie pies. I did a chocolate with mocha filling and crushed candy cane around the outside. I also did a chocolate cookie with peppermint filling and peppermint candy canes around the outside. And I did chocolate with raspberry. I've also I'm going to be doing some cinnamon rolls and sticky buns and I'm going to show you how I do them for a bake sale. I will show you the recipe that does supposedly 80 cinnamon rolls but I think I usually get seven or eight pans so we'll see. This recipe if I'm using it to sell what do you think? It's good. <laughs> it, I think it's the best cinnamon roll I've ever had and yeah I never had cinnamon or anything like that. So, don't know how to compare it to anything homemade. I think it's so much better than store-bought or restaurant quality or chain store. But anyway, I'm rambling on now. I want to thank Kathy for letting me borrow her recipe. It is so good. I've been using this recipe for at least two years now. All right, let's go over the ingredients. We're gonna need a quart of milk, two cups of mashed potatoes, and I just use dehydrated potato flakes for instant mashed potatoes and just constitute it for per the manufacturer's instructions. No salt, no butter, no or milk. We use two tablespoons of salt, two eggs, a cup of oil, three tablespoons of yeast, a cup of sugar, and 12 to 14 cups of flour. You can use a mixture of bread flour and all-purpose, but I have just done this with all-purpose and done just fine. Then for the goo, you will need corn syrup, brown sugar, and softened butter. Of course, you need walnuts, because I think sticky buns are not sticky buns without nuts. I am just a nut person, if you can tell from my previous videos. All right, let's get to mixing. All right, we're gonna start with the milk, then the mashed potatoes, and the sugar, and the two eggs minus the shells that's why I crack them one at a time and the oil goes in and three tablespoons of yeast that might be a lot of yeast but boy it makes them rise so quickly and so tenderly and I keep it in the freezer just to keep it longer and then we're gonna add the flour, and we're gonna need 12 to 14 cups. And during the editing, I noticed I actually put in 16. That's three, and that's four, five, six, I think I'm just going to pour it all in. This is the Bosch. It can handle it. And then two tablespoons of salt. Double check our ingredients list. Make sure we have it all in there. Obviously take more flour. It's really wet here. I mean, really wet. So definitely need two cups. Put in one more because I think I always have to add. All right. See how very sticky it is. We need more flour. I'm gonna do one cup at a time. It's almost pulling away from the sides here. So not pulling away from over here. So I'm gonna give it another half cup of flour.
And it's not mixed all the way here yet. All right, see how it's pulled away from the side? That means we need to knead this dough for 10 minutes. And see how I can pick it up and it not really stick to my hands at all? That means it has enough flour. All right. So I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna let it go for 10 minutes. I love using the Instant Pot yogurt setting to raise dough. It does a nice job. Now we're going to make the goo for the bottom of the pans to make the bun sticky. I'm using a stick and a half of butter. Two, two cups brown sugar, not packed, and half this bottle of Kira syrup. So then you just want to pop it. So you just want to take your spatula and just go around. All right, I put a third cup on each one. Make sure you get it spread out to all the good pieces. All right. That helps you roll the dough out thinner. That's where I've gotten frustrated with stuff. I figured it out. All right. I failed to show you right here that I did cut my dough in half and this is only half of the batch. exercise machine. Like you can lay on the floor and you roll back on this wheel. I think and I can make baking exercise, right? Yeah, I think this dough is a little bit bigger than the other one. I wish I had Hale in here to throw this out. I know, she likes to play with the dough. In fact, I had one time I had to make extra pizza dough just so she can knead it for me. So we made it into cinnamon rolls for supper that night. One dip night should be saved for.
cinnamon. I think we're good. <laughs> All right, time to get down and dirty. Makes me think of throwing a quilt onto the quilt frame. And that's one of the reasons why I started this channel. To get spending money to be able to buy materials for quilts that I want to make for veterans and kids in foster care and people battling cancer and need chemo treatments. They need quilts while they're getting their treatments. At least I think it'll be the nicest thing to do is give somebody a quilt that's in need. This is the fun part. When they come out of the oven, I'm being sarcastic about the fun part. All right, you put a clean pan on top, and you take two oven mitts, and you turn it over. I hope it goes in the pan right. 